What's up guys, Vinayak here. So I just heard that they put India under a state of lockdown and many of you guys who watch my videos are from there. So that's quite unfortunate, but I guess it has to be done to control the spread of the virus. So since you guys are at home all day now, you have many options, right? You can watch Netflix, you can watch TV, movies and stuff like that. But you can also watch some videos on control systems, right? Because if you want to learn that, hey, now is the time. So this video, we will talk about lateral flight control and we'll be using the root locus method, which is a very common method to design control systems, especially in the classical domain. It's used in industry all the time. A company which uses this a lot is called Boston Dynamics. I'm sure you guys know of them. They make very high performance robots and they do look for people who have skills of classical control. So that's a very useful skill to have. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So guys, here we have a typical block diagram of a control system here. For example, the system that we want to control could be the space launch system or like a satellite or something. The controller has elements like GCFS, which is the controller itself, which feeds a signal to the plant given by GPFS and the plant is your system. And lastly, you have a sensor given by HFS. We are working in the S domain, which represents the Laplace domain. Next, you have a PID control format, which is given by KP plus KI over S plus KD multiplied by S. And PID control is a very popular form of control. You can see how it looks in a block diagram format here. I'm sure this is the way you all do it in school. So this makes sense of everything. You have your plant and the controller there. You have the output, the inputs and the sensor. So here are some things that you should know, especially in the form of second order systems, for example, a spring mass system. And a lot of systems can be approximated as second order systems. If you look at the bottom left, you have a graph here, which shows a bunch of parameters such as the rise time, settling time, peak time, and so on. And the, the rise time is how long it takes for the system to reach its about 60% of its final value. And you can also characterize the second order system by this bottom right graph here. So you can see a bunch of lines there. You have the angle, you have the omega n, which is the natural frequency. You have omega d, which is the damped natural frequency. And the formulas are given by here. So the rise time is pi minus the angle over omega d. So, and the damped natural frequency omega d can be related to omega n by multiplying it by one minus zeta square square root. And zeta square is nothing other than the damping ratio which is a function of the overshoot given by OS, as you can see there. The damping ratio equals negative ln of the overshoot divided by 100, divided by square root of pi square plus ln square of that value overshoot over 100. And you can also relate the angle to the arc cosine of the damping ratio. The peak time is how long it takes for the system to achieve its maximum value, as you can see again in the bottom left curve. So that's pi over omega d. One more important thing to know in control system design is the final value law. This tells you when time goes to infinity, what the value will be in your system. So in our last few lectures, we talked about how we are working in the Laplace domain, and this is the same. So when time goes to infinity, S goes to zero. So that's something you should keep in mind. Also here we have G of S is your open loop transfer function. And you can also compare it to a bunch of inputs, namely step, ramp, and parabolic. This we talked about in our last tutorial, so go back to those notes if you don't know what they are. So KP, KV, and KA here on the right that you see are the error constants. KP is called position error, KV is called velocity error, and then KA is called the acceleration error. Now these are error constants that you use, and you, you must also make sure that when you design the system, you can achieve a specific error constant. Here we have a quick example of the final value theorem if you're not sure about those formulas. Over here we have the sensor HFS is given by 1 and GFS equals 1 over S multiplied by S plus 2. The, you have to find GC of S such that the velocity error is constant. So that corresponds to KV, right? If you go on the last slide and it should be more than 20. And then also check your damping ratio. So the first thing you do is you have to design the controller GC of S, right? So you set that equal to k and then you get g of s is equal to k divided by s over s plus 2. And when you find kv, you take the limit of s multiplied by g of s 
and put in s equals 0 because once again when time equals infinity s equals 0 you get k is equal to 40 so you get the formula there and you can see the cal calculation here once you get k equals 40 you have to first get the closed loop transfer function so if you go back in the block diagram you have to close the loop right and you know what the sensor is so the formula for that is given there it's g divided by 1 plus g times h and since h is equal to 1 it is simply g divided by 1 plus g you plug in g it's given here and you get 40 over s squared plus 2s plus 40 and then you can solve for your damping ratio and your natural frequency by means of the second order system formulas as you can see in this picture here so that makes it quite easy so since we have a damping ratio zeta of less than one your system will be under damped so i hope you guys understood up until that part that was just a review of classical control formulas and the final value rules the main thing you should know is that when time equals infinity s equals zero and you have different error constants for step inputs which are position velocity and acceleration which correspond to ramp and parabolic as you can see before so here we have our example of lateral flight control you have a very big transfer function as you can see there it is something multiplied by s squared divided by something multiplied by s to the power of four and in this case actually your output is the bank angle so if you have an airplane here it's like a small jumbo jet that i have the output is the turn angle that's the output and the input is the aileron angles there so the transfer function as you all know it's outputs divided by inputs and you can get this value here so your job is to use the root, root locus method such that you have to design a controller by using the root locus method to achieve first of all zero steady state error second of all a rise time of 1.0 seconds and lastly an overshoot of less than 10 percent so that's your problem right that's your control design problem normally you will always start with the transfer function and some parameters for which you have to design the controller to achieve those parameters that's the whole objective of control system design is to uh, design something to achieve something from your system step one is to plot the root locus so now in my last two videos i had detailed examples there but we can just quickly recap those here we can say that we have four lines because we have four poles and two zeros so maximum of four and two is equal to four since you only have two zeros that means two poles will have unmatched pairs lastly if you take the roots of the numerator which is negative 4.984 s squared so on use the quadratic formula it's quite simple you will get the zeros as s is equal to negative 0 0.1805 plus or minus 1.27 times i so they are complex if you take the roots of the denominator it's more work but you will get s is equal to 0 0.884 negative negative 0 0.027 and you will have two complex poles given by negative 0 0.3 three five nine plus or minus one point two nine eight times i and from right away you can conclude that your system is stable why because all the poles are negative and you, you don't have any non-minimum phase behavior and that can be clearly seen because all the zeros are negative as well so your system is super stable on its own next you can use the asymptote angle formula to obtain the angles and the centroid it's given very clearly here and i also talked about this in my last tutorial so watch that if you're a little bit unsure you simply have n minus m minus 1 is equal to 2 1 and q equals 0 and 1 so you get the angles there as you can see very clearly for the centroid you sum up the poles and the zeros only the real parts of it and you will get negative 0 0.6 also you can say that there are no breakaway and break-in points. So for this, also the formula was discussed in my last two videos. You simply use this very big formula here and if you simplify it, you will see that there are no values of S. So you will have basically have no breakaway and break-in points. With all this information, you have your root locus there, as you can see very clearly here. You have two poles which are going to infinity because they have, have an unmatched zero. Then you have two poles and zeros which are a matching pair 
and they are the complex poles and the complex zeros as, as you can see here so that's your root locus there one more thing i can say is that if you look at rule number five the locus is only between an odd number of poles and zeros look carefully you'll see it and lastly you have no breakaway and break-in points all right so now we can so now we have the root locus right your step one is done so we can start with the PID control design now. So now when designing the PID controller, you also have to follow a specific number of steps. So number one is use the parameters that, that you have been provided. So the overshoot and the rise time. From that, you can use the formulas on the second slide to obtain the damping ratio and the angle. You can also obtain the damped natural frequency given by omega d also the natural frequency given by omega n and you can also obtain the x axis of the root locus given by zeta times omega n and i have the steps given here in this picture here you follow this in a sequence and you can get all the values which you need because we know what the overshoot and the rise time is is given to you in the problem So from that, you have the location of your dominant pole. So what this is, is that from those parameters, you obtain a bunch of points, right? You obtain your zeta omega n and your omega d. This becomes your x and your y points of something called the dominant pole. So when you plot that, you'll see what I mean. So you will obtain something like this. You have zeta omega n on the x axis and you have omega d or the damped natural frequency on the y-axis and you also have the angle there so this we basically here is your dominant pole so from this you can then say that now when you have an open loop transfer function when you shut the loop a zero becomes a pole think about what i just said so the formula right it's g of s divided by one plus g of s if you have any zeros in the g of s, they will go to a pole when you do 1 plus g of s. So like the numerator will go in the denominator, right? So with this in mind, the root locus methods take this into consideration and you will have something called, something you have to find called the angle contribution. So you have to find something called the matching zero from this dominant pole. So to find the angle contribution, you do 180 minus the sum of all the angles that the dominant pole makes with the other poles plus all the angles that the dominant pole makes with the other zeros if you don't get anything of what i just said i'll put a picture now which you will understand very you basically have to find a bunch of angles that the dominant pole makes with all the other poles and the zeros and then sum them up respectively so this picture shows you everything first of all i just plotted everything on some graphing software here I plotted the root locus along with my dominant pole, which I just did before. And then I've solved for those angles there. So you have the angles one, two, three, and four. The fourth angle corresponds to the zero. And they're always measured from the positive X axis upward. It's like this, right? So positive angle is this way. So from that, you will get 180 minus all the angles at the poles minus the zero here. So when you do this, you will get the angles there so you have a bunch of angles from the poles and the zeros now this you can just you can get these angles by a simple trig use sine cos and tan and get them and you will get a value of negative 51.32 so since you have a negative number there it actually corresponds to plus 51.32 from a zero so when you get that you have your angle and when you have the angle you can use the dominant pole location, which we just solved before, along with that angle to get the zero. The zero turns out to be at S equals negative 3.379. And if you're unsure of what that is, take a look at this thing here. I'm basically drawing the angle there because we know what the angle is, right? And you know this height, so you can get this location here, use trig. And the steps for that are shown step by step here. You can see how I solve for X. That becomes your zero. So now you have a zero. So S equals negative 3.379, that corresponds to a zero. So that means S plus 
3.379. So we have designed our PD controller. If you look at the formula for PID, it's KP plus KD times S plus plus KI over S. So you have KP is equal to 3.379 and KD here is equal to just one. This K value, I'm just assuming as one for now. So we have the zero location there. So now with the zero location, you can put everything together. You have S plus 3.379. That was your zero. You solved for that before with all those steps multiplied by your transfer function, which is just here. All right. So, so far we have done that, but we have still some more stuff to do. You have to first fix the steady state error also, right? Because that's also a parameter which we define in the problem. So with the final value theorem, you will obtain that the final value is non-zero. If you just plug in S equals zero there, you will have some numbers which are remaining. So it's just non-zero. The first option is to just add a gain to match the numerator and the denominator when S equals zero, but that's not very good. So I would say don't do that. The best thing would be to just add integral action because that because that makes a zero steady state error usually. It's more versatile, so you will just add one over S there. With that being said, you have your controller there as one over S plus S plus 3.379. That's your PID controller. And you have KP is equal to 3.379. KI is equal to one. And then KD is also equal to one. So with that controller designed, uh, here I have my MATLAB simulation, which I built. If you're a student at Concordia who is under my class, and if you want this file, just send me an email and I'll give it to you. I just made a basic flight simulation here with flight gear. I have a video on how to connect MATLAB to flight gear. If you're interested in that, it's free, so you can just use it. Then you have your PID controller there, your plant and your open loop system transfer function, which is shown right here. So with that, you can take a look at what the simulation looks like. It tracks very well with zero steady state error. You might be wondering why the output and the input are mirrored. It's because you have a negative sign in the transfer function, so it flips it, but you still have zero error. As you can see, it's exactly the same. Even with when I use a sign input, this part here, you have zero, zero error. So our controller is done and you're able to achieve zero tracking error at steady state values of the angle there. So that's it. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions and if you are in the class at Concordia, who I'm teaching right now, uh, feel free to send me an email and I will get back to you. I hope you guys learned something new about root locus design methods and a very popular tool, especially called PID control, used for control design. With that being said, I hope to see you guys soon. Stay safe, stay home. Um, you know, just just live your life at home, I guess. Um, learn new things, spend time with your family. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.